tonight is the decade of the 90s in which tonight's guests began their world domination. Uh, and if my teenager's playlist is anything to go by, a whole other generation is just catching on to his first band that were called, do you remember them? Oasis. Uh, 29 years since that spectacularly productive and successful sibling spat first started. And of course, many hoping a 30 year reunion might be on the cards next year. Uh, crystal balls at the ready for that one. Tonight, instead, we're landing in the absolutes of here and now. Uh, it's been 13 years since High Flying Birds first got together. They've just released their fourth album, Council Skies. They are mid-tour in the States right now, but back on these shores next month to tour relentlessly for the rest of the year. He's a very busy man, uh, but he's taken time tonight to join us for our great conversation. Our very special guest is Noel Gallagher. Hiya, Noel. Jackie Brambles, how are you? I'm good. I'm really good. It's a bit of a, it's a, bit of, it's a, bit of a depleted household here at the moment because I've got a, a son who's a Man United fan. So, Well, get rid of him. <laughs> Easy. Done. Get, you get, want him? Right. Get, no, not a chance. No, I have a gardener and a butler. I don't need a United fan. Or who I'm yours. Yeah, and, you're on, and my, my son tells me um, to say, if I want to sound sensible, like I know what I'm talking about, to say, it looks like you're on for the treble. Uh, yeah, well, uh, it's, as, it's as close as we've been in a while, but um, yeah, stranger things have happened. It's going to be f- f- very exciting. Now, I know you're in the US at the moment, uh, so I do hope you find a friendly tavern to watch the match in, but you're there more importantly as part of your US tour. That's right, yeah. Of course, you're performing select tracks from the full repertoire of Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds over the years, but obviously, front and centre, are the new songs from the new album, which came out this week. It's called Council Skies. Tell tell us a little bit about, about the title and how it all came together. So, the tune itself is... um. I guess it's a song about trying to find young love or beauty or uh, amidst the concrete and rubble of council estates, uh, which was obviously I grew up on a council estate, so it's something I can speak of with a fair bit of uh, authority. Yeah. And um, the title of the song, I, I, I started to write, I started to write that song. The germ of it started to uh, take place in, in Ibiza, and. Um, I, which is why it's got like a boss and overfeel to it, I guess. Right. Uh, and um, and there was a bit in the song I needed a hook for it, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I was hitting a brick wall with it. And uh, I was back in London, and um, you know, I was just noodling around with it one day, and on my coffee table was a was a book by an artist called Pete McKee, who does um, these great paintings and illustrations of people on council estates. This book is called Council Skies, and uh, I looked at it and thought oh my, that might fit in this song. So I kind of, and it did fit, so I kind of shoehorned it in there and uh, I called him and said, can I steal this title for my song? And he said, yeah. And uh, I liked it so much, I named the album after it. So, um, and the the Council Skies, I said, what is Council Skies anyway? Explain that to me, because I'm going to have to explain it to everybody else. And he said, (laughs) well, well, he said, it's a particular shade of blue that I mix when I'm painting my pictures. And uh, it's a particular shade of blue that I use for the sky. And I call it Council Skies. And I was like, well, isn't this rather poetic? Featuring Johnny Marr on guitar, as he does on a few tracks, actually. That's the title track, Council Skies, from the new album by Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds. Uh, Noel is here with us for our great conversation on Greatest Hits Radio. And uh, and the video for that, Noel, was shot at a pretty historic music venue in Manchester, right? Yeah, the uh, New Century Hall. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's only recently reopened opened and uh, it's hosted... Uh, Jimi Hendrix played there in the 60s and it was a big... Uh, it's a big music venue. I mean, I never went myself, um, but yeah, it's quite it's quite the thing. They've got the original lighting rig in the ceiling, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, and we shot the video on um, in Crumpsall and up uh, on the east side of Manchester. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's very very Mancunian. So, as we said, you're in the states on tour right now. But as far as Britain is concerned, you've kind of got sort of two chunks of tours haven't you Noel is that right like a bunch of summer shows bit of a break and then a kind of a pre-Christmas run yeah it, as far as the UK are concerned yeah there's, there's like outdoor shows in the summer and uh, indoor shows in the winter but and 
in between all that, I'm all over the place. I'll be out in Europe and Japan and, um, uh, yeah, I'll manage to squeeze a holiday in somewhere. But, yeah, it's all busy, busy now after... You're going to get cracking and get going. Well, we like... I love being busy. I've had kind of three years sitting around and this is it now and it's, um, you know, Thunderbirds, I'll go after this. So I'm looking forward to it. Do you still like being out on the road and touring? Does that sort of feel like your natural, you know, environment to be in for you? Yeah, I, yeah. I've, I think the more I do it, the, the more I do it and the older I get, the more I appreciate it. Now, I've loved it up until this point, um, so I'm assuming the next one will be great, but I'm, um, I still have, you know, as long as I'm making records, I'll be going out playing them. Um, whether, you know, I guess... I guess the older that you get, the, the more you have to tailor your touring schedule to suit your failing body, <laughs> um, which I'm sure I'm sure in the years to come uh, will will be the case. But at the moment, yeah, bring it on. The more the more the merrier. Oh, that's brilliant. Do you write while you're on the road? I try not to. Do you know what? I've never. I've always tried. Not to, I mean, I have, of course, written like the odd song in there, but as a rule, no, because uh, because I've got I have so much to do on the road, like promo and the gigs themselves, and yeah, um, having you know, rest in between gigs. I don't, I don't really tend to write. I mean, I tend to write at home in a very relaxed manner or in my studio, but you know, when I'm on the road, it's you know, gigging, shopping, uh, watching telly, sitting around doing that really, and then do the gig at night, and then repeat that for about. 18 months. That's a track called Pretty Boy, again featuring Johnny Marr on guitar. And who knew Noel Gallagher was a huge Cure fan? Well, he is. Uh, and there's a Robert Smith remix of Pretty Boy on the new album Council Skies, which was released this week. And we will return to step back through the mists of time to get a sense of Noel's early musical memories as we continue our great conversation with Noel Gallagher on Greatest Hits Radio next. Welcome back to the evening show with Jackie Brambles, where it's just you, me, and our very special guest tonight, Noel Gallagher, cozying on in for a great conversation on Greatest Hits Radio. So, right now, let's find out a bit about your earliest childhood musical memories. Do you remember the first single you bought with your pocket money? I do indeed, and I'm afraid. Uh, well, it was bought. Well, it's okay. Don't be. Don't be ashamed. I'm not going to be ashamed. Don't you worry about that. Uh, the f- well, the, uh, there's two things. The first single that was bought for me was um, "Won't Let the Show Go On" by Leo Sayer. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's a great tune. I still love it. Love it. And uh, the first thing that I bought, I'm afraid I'm this cool to say it was "Anarchy in the UK" by the Sex Pistols. I do apologise. That is. That's, yeah. I know, it does, literally doesn't get any better than that. If I had to write a script and I had to take a guess at what your first single was, that, that would probably be the stereotype I'd have put in there. Well, there you go. I am nothing you can't The debut single from the Sex Pistols, Anarchy in the UK from 1976, Noel Gallagher's first ever single vinyl purchase at the musically precocious age of nine. And how about um, the first album? Would you remember what that was? It was Sex Pistols, uh, closely followed by uh, The Damned's second, maybe first, The Damned's first album, Music for Pleasure. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. We had Captain Sensible on the show not long ago. Oh, really? He's still firing on all cylinders. Well, you know what? The, and, and The Damned were the first gig I ever went to, the first band I ever saw live. And um, the, the, out of all the people that I've met down the years, and I've met everyone. Yeah. And almost, I mean, apart from Bob Dylan, I think I've met everyone, right? And uh, I've never met any of The Damned. Ooh. Yeah. It's outrageous. That is outrageous. Let's to get that sorted. Um, yeah, they, I'm. A, I mean, I'm a. I'm a. I'm a huge fan. I was a huge fan when I was a young boy, and I'm still a huge fan. And uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're still very special bands. They are, they're still, and they're still out gigging with their decaying bodies. I know. So yeah, I know. So I believe that there's a great documentary on the. On one of the uh, streaming platforms about them. It was brilliant, brilliant documentary. They're a great band, brilliant live band, and yeah, still right into it. Every night 
The Damned. And even if you're not familiar or particularly a fan, who can fail not to love that track? Their highest charting tune, Eloise, got to number three in 1986. The Damned were the first live gig ever encountered by a young lad by the name of Noel Gallagher, who, to state the blooming obvious, went on to become an artist of some note himself as part of a band you may have heard of called Oasis. Uh, he's our very special guest on the evening show tonight for our great conversation. So, Noel, when you guys first sort of started out and you were you know getting a little bit of attention getting a bit of traction before we the general public knew who you were um who would have been your contemporaries equally right on the brink of, of breaking through who are you sort of looking at thinking oh god i think they're gonna get there before us to be honest n- n- not there was a band called who were round about the same age as us who were from the same part of town as it's called the Yaya's and they had a manager before we did and I think they might have mm. uh, been doing bigger gigs than us but they, ne- they never got anywhere. Uh, one of them actually ended up playing bass in the video for Wonderwall because uh, our bass player had had a bit of a moment and freaked out. Oh, wow. um, but no, no, we, ca- we kind of came through at the end of what became known as Manchester and it was a bit of a quiet period in the city and uh, we didn't really have any any peers at that point. But they were all down south, our peers. Like, um, actually, Pulp and Blur were a few years ahead of us. Um, yeah. I think maybe The Verve. Oh, right, OK. Our, our timing, uh, the, the timing of Oasis was absolutely impeccable. Because we came, and The Verve came after us. We kind of came through on our own, I think. Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. Oasis, Wonderwall from 1995, a song written by tonight's very special guest, Noel Gallagher, and we'll be back with more great conversation with Noel next on Greatest Hits Radio. Welcome back to the evening show with Jackie Brambles. This is the magical hour of the show, our great conversation, where every night we get to enjoy some top-notch nattering with one of our favourite artists of the 70s, 80s and 90s. Tonight, we're chuffed to be joined by the leader of Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds, who have a brand new album out this week. It's called Count Council Skies, uh, and a new album, of course, always a lot of work on the songwriting front, Noel. Do you remember the first song you ever wrote? I'm not sure I remember the first song I ever wrote. I remember the first great song I wrote, which was Live Forever, but I'd written, I was writing before that, but... How old were you then, then? Ooh, early 20s. Right. Um, but, I, but, uh, but, but, but that Live Forever came about a good 18 months into... Oasis. So I'd, I'd written quite a few songs before that, but they were com- they were unmemorable. Do you know what I mean? They weren't they weren't great. But um, the demo tape that I did when I was when I was young, like a kind of teenager, um, um, appeared appeared at an auction mm. uh, a few years back, and I had to verify. I haven't even got a copy of this demo tape. It was some early early songs, and um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I've always, it's something I've always been into. Any good? How did you rate them when you had to verify them? Did I rate it well? <laughs> part of me thought it was genius and another part of me thought it's dreadful. But um <laughs> I uh it was all right, you know, somebody somebody paid a ridiculous amount of money for it. I don't know what on earth they think they're gonna do with it. Um but yeah, it was all right. It was all right for a first attempt, I guess. I know exactly I I know what it was and I know who introduced us and I know what I was wearing. I know I know he introduced us as a an in like an indie band and I remember the tambourine player getting very upset that he'd refer to as a, as an indie band. Um, oh, what was his name? Oh, well, the one that it says here that your very first appearance was on the thirtieth of June, nineteen ninety four, <clears throat> for Shaker Maker, and it was Bruno Brooks. That's it, Bruno Brooks. You remember it? I remember it well. Yeah, um, we. Uh, uh, I think John Bon Jovi was on the same was on the same program and uh, he came in with a copy of Rolling Stone yeah and that's why I knocked on the dressing room door and he said hey you guys are in Rolling Stone and we were like well I think we were a bit we were a bit drunk at that time of the morning right and uh, and uh, he gave 
the tambourine player, uh, the copy of the Rolling Stone, uh, Rolling Stone, and said, hey, when you get to the States, tell them John Bon Jovi gave, gave you the first copy of Rolling Stone. <laughs> and our kid went, it was John Bon Jovi. Oh. Which, uh, which was very funny. Uh, but, yeah, the, you know, Top of the Pops was like, obviously, to all of us from a certain age, was like a massive, massive oh, thing. And to, actually, to actually be there... And uh, you know, to be on the stage and be you know, it was. I used to love doing Top of the Pops. It was sort of a surreal, you know, experience, wasn't it? This, you know, you you it was completely not what you think it is when you've been watching it as a kid. When you're on the same, but we I remember being on the same bill as Jimmy Nail, right? When Crocodile Shoes was number was number one, right? And I remember um, he walked through the. Uh, it, it was a real sunny afternoon. We were all sat outside drinking, and he and he kind of walked through the front outside that bar. And uh, we all started singing Crocodile Shoes. And he said, and Jimmy and Ailes said something to Liam, right? And Liam kind of stood up in a threatening manner. And I'll never forget this. Jimmy and Ailes, Jimmy and Ailes went, Aye, he's up and he's stocky. <laughs> <laughs> to which I fell off a chair laughing. <laughs> and uh, Aye, he's up and he's stocky. Oh, yeah, that's brilliant. spirits all the time. Got to number four in 1994, Jimmy Nail with crocodile shoes and apparently a witty turn of phrase when he encountered a swaggering young Liam Gallagher in the top of the pop studios. So so when you first were on there, obviously all your family and your friends are watching and, it, you know, the next day everything changes. Obviously you've got a little bubble of people who already know who you are, but the general public suddenly, you know, know who you are. Do you remember what that experience was, was like? Did you cope quite well with it or...? Yeah, I was ready for it. You're ready for it. Uh, I mean, I was lucky for me. I'd, I'd kind of, I'd been, I'd been uh, part of a road crew for a band from Manchester called Inspiral Carpets a few years before that. So I'd, I'd been to the top of the pop studio, and I'd been on the road, and I, and I kind of knew what was coming. But the first top of the pop's appearance was the. It was only then that my mum accepted what we were doing was in any way valid. Right. You know, she was like, "What have you been doing in London?" And we're, like, we're on top of the pops. <laughs> What? And we're like, <laughs> yes, we've been telling you we're amazing. <laughs> uh, but um, well, yeah, it's like you've made it when you you made it when you did Top of the Pops. That was it, you know. And uh, it kind of, as great as it is, it kind of uh, it kind of shatters the illusion a bit, you know, because I I always thought everyone that was on Top of the Pops was a multi millionaire. Yeah. Right. And 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 you know, we turned up in a transit van that somebody had put petrol in and it was a diesel van it was broke down it was all a kind of comedy of errors thing <laughs> and we were like oh maybe 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 it wasn't like that back in the 70s <laughs> oh. um but they were yeah we used to love going and i remember once when uh i think we were the only band ever to refuse to play live we were like you know every, everybody was like no we, can we play live on top of the pots so we were like i'm not playing live i'd rather get drunk in the bar to be honest with you mime badly well i think you made the right decision the people i have talked to who insisted on it you know live to regret it i think because it was the bloke who was doing the sound on the cricket who was sort of in charge of the the, <laughs> the mixing desk it didn't go very well yeah. <laughs> were like, no 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 i'd rather i'd rather get drunk than, than play live Shaker Maker, the song Oasis first sang on top of the pops. It got to number 11 in 1994, uh, but there were 23 top 10 songs yet to come, including eight number ones. Not too shabby. Well, listen, let me, before you go, ask you um, our, fi our final question that we ask everyone, Noel, and not daft enough to ask you for a favourite song, but a particular song that you revisit fairly often because you know for sure it will give you the mood lift that you are looking for, whether that's to be inspired or calmed down or energised. Like it's a dead cert when you play that song. OK, well, it's a little-known fact that I am a huge fan of Tears for Fears. Oh! Show, show. And, yeah, I loved them back then, and... I still love them now. I think they're all great, great, great songs. I'm a huge fan of the Pet Shop Boys, actually, which people are disgusted by. Don't know why. When they find that fantastic out. fantastic songs. Uh, so I tell, I tell you what. So I tell you what. I'm going to choose. Go on. I was at Glastonbury last year, and um, on the Sunday night, 
as the entire festival is walking one way to go and see Kendrick Lamar, I'm going the other way to see the Pet Shop Boys. And everyone's <laughs> like, you can going to see Kendrick? I was like, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> going to see the Pet Shop Boys. So I dragged a few people with me and I was like, just be amazed at how many hits you're going to hear here. So I'm going to pick Love Comes Quickly by the Pet Shop Boys, which is an incredible chip. The melody is just to die for. I wish I'd written it. And... Uh, I dedicate it to, obviously, Neil and Chris, who've remixed one of the tunes on my new record, so... Oh, fantastic. His love comes quickly by the Pet Shop Boys. Their second hit single got to number 19 in 1986, Love Comes Quickly by the Pet Shop Boys, who can also be found on the new album, Council Skies, by Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds. A nice full circle moment to finish on. Thank you, mate. It's been a real pleasure. No worries. Thank you. All the best with the rest of the US tour, and we look forward to seeing you performing on stage back home over the summer. Safe travels. Oh, thank you. Noel Gallagher, what a lovely chat.